So we are now moving on to having a look at how we find beta, the probability of making a type 2 error. This is going to take us slightly longer to go through because it is slightly harder to do. So when the null hypothesis is false and you fail to reject it, you make a type 2 error. So that's what we're starting to talk about now. The probability of making a type 2 error is beta. You can do this by ensuring your sample size is large enough to detect a practical difference uh, when one truly exists. This is slightly harder to calculate as when we are assuming that H0 is not true, we need to know what the true value of P or lambda or the mean actually is so that we can calculate the chance that we accept H0 using the true P or lambda or mu. So we're going to start off, we're going to look at each of uh, the normal hypothesis testing, uh, Poisson hypothesis testing and binomial hypothesis testing separately this time because the methods are slightly different for each. So when we're doing examples with the mean, which is usually a normal one, uh, so it is believed that the mean volume of liquid in a small container is 84 millilitres. The standard deviation of the liquid is 10 millilitres. A test is performed at a 5% significance level using a sample of four. It is later found out that the true mean of the liquid per container is 81 millilitres. We're finding the probability uh, of making a type two error was made. So here, we're believing that the mean volume of liquid in the container is 84 millilitres. So if we were doing this as a hypothesis test, our H0 would have been that the mean was 84, and our H1 would have been that the mean was not 84. We would have been using the distribution X squiggle N 84 our standard deviation was 10 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 4. Remember that when we write this term, we're actually writing down the variance in our distribution. So we're using a 5% significance level and we're using a two-tailed test. Now, we've actually already talked about this because we were talking about it when we were looking at confidence intervals. We know that the central 95% is going to be our accept H0 region, and we can find that quite quickly. So, our accept H0 region, if we go into stat dist norm, we're going to go into inverse normal. We're looking at the central, because it's a 5% significance level, the rest of it's going to be 95%. Our standard deviation is 10 divided by the square root of 4. And our mean is 84 to begin with. So that tells us that we are accepting H0 when we are between 74.200 1801 and 93.7998199 and it's quite important that you make sure that you keep that to enough significant figures so I've just wrote down all of the ones that were given to me in the calculator. However, because we're trying to find the probability of making a type 2 error, that means that in reality H0 is not true and we actually have a different uh, mean value. So actually, we are not using this as our H1 anymore. And instead, our alternate hypothesis is that the mean is the true mean, which is 81. So I now need to find the probability that given that the actual mean is 81, that I am still in this interval here. So I need to go back in my calculator. This time we're going to use NCD. My lower is going to be the lower part of my accept H0 region, which is 74.2001801. 
the upper part of my region is going to be 93.7998199. Sorry, put too many nines in there. My standard deviation stays the same, but my mean is actually 81 because we're finding the probability of making a type 2 error, which means that H0 is not true. So that means that H1 must be true, which is the true mean. And we're still trying to find the probability that we would then be inside our accept H0 region. And that gives us beta. So in this case, beta is 0 0.908 to three significant figures. So that's what we would do for a two-tailed test. For this next example, we have, it is believed that the mean mass of a teenage boy is less than 84 kilograms. So if we were doing a hypothesis test with this, we would have that the mean is 84, and for H1, we would have that the mean is less than 84. The standard, and we would be using X squiggle N, 84. The standard deviation is 10, and we are taking a sample of 4. It is later found that the mean mass is actually 81. So we're going to handle that a bit later on. So to start off with again, we're going to have a look at what our accept H0 region would be if we were actually to run this hypothesis test. Now this is a little bit different. So this time you have to think about what we're actually looking at. So if I quickly sketch what my normal distribution looks like. The mean's in the middle, so in this case we're still taking the mean as being 84. And I'm wanting my... Doesn't say the significance level of the test, but that means that this time it would be a 5% significance level because we're talking about a type 2 error, not a type 1 error, and it doesn't give me my reject criteria. So that means that here I'm going to have 5%. So that means I'm going into dist, norm, inverse normal. I want my tail to be going to the left. I want my area to be 0 0.05. I want my standard deviation to be 10 divided by the square root of, five, of uh, 4. Sorry. And I want my mean to be 84. So that means that my accept H0 criteria is going to be when I am bigger than this number because this bit that I've shaded in here, that's going to be my reject H0 region, which means that this bit, sorry, it's not changing my colour, this bit here is going to be my accept and this bit here was going to be my reject at a 5% significance level. So because we're talking about the accept H0 region, we're wanting X to be more than 75.77573319. However, in reality, we have found that the mean is actually 81. So we are changing our H1 to now be that the mean is 81. That's our true mean. So H0, for a type 2 error, H0 is not true, which means that H1 must be true. And we're wanting to accept H0. So back into NCD, our lower is going to be 75.77573319. Our upper is going to be a really big positive number. Our standard deviation stays the same, but our true mean is now 81. That means that our beta, our probability of making a type 2 error, is 0.852. 
So you can see there the difference between a two tail and a one tail. A two tail is much simpler because it's the central part where it's R except H naught. But you do have to be careful when you are doing a one tail test that you are looking at the correct sign. So you need to make sure that it makes sense. Here, we were thinking that the teenage boy weighed less than 84 kilograms. So if you quickly draw your distribution, you can see that you would be wanting to find the difference if it was on an extreme below 84, not above 84, because that means that you would be looking for them to weigh more than 84 kilograms. Once you can see what the reject H0 region looks like, you can easily see that the rest of this would then be accept H0, which then helps you when deciding if you're looking more than this value or less than this value as well. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try questions a go for normal finding type two errors. So for the first now you try, it is believed that the mean height of a plant is 12.6 is centimetres tall. So that means it either is 12.6 or it's not 12.6. So this is a two tail test. The standard deviation of the plants is known to be 0.4. A random sample of 10 such plants is taken and a hypothesis test a 5% significance level is performed. So you can see here, that means we've got X follows the normal distribution with a mean of 12.6 and a standard deviation of 0.4 divided by the square root of 10. Find the probability of making a type 2 error given that the mean height of plants is actually 12 centimetres. So you can see here that using, if I go back, using inverse normal, central because it's two tail, 0 0.95 because it says a 5% significance level, standard deviation and mean, we end up with this interval here, that is our accept H0 region, then we know that the true mean is 12 which means that we put the lower part of our accept region in lower, the upper part of our accept region in, over, in upper. Standard deviation stays the same, but the mean changes to 12, and that gives us beta. Remember that this is standard form. I would now like you to try the second now you try question. So hopefully you've given the second now you try question a go. So in this case, we're looking at less than 12.6 centimetres long for the length of these worms. We know that the standard deviation is known to be one and we're looking at a random sample of 10, which means that we're using X follows a normal distribution of 12.6 and one over the square root of 10 squared for our variance. Our H naught would be that the mean is 12.6. Our H1 would be that the mean is less than 12.6. So then we're finding our accept H0 region. Again, I've done a quick diagram here to think about it. Well, my mean at the beginning is 12.6. I'm wanting it to be less than that. So I'm wanting my 10% to be on that side. So I put my tail going left, my area being 0 0.1, my standard deviation one divided by the square root of 10, and my mean of 12.6. And that meant that that value there, where the line is, is 12.1947376. But like I've put there, that's the reject H0 bit. I needed to write down my accept H0 bit, which means I was looking at X being bigger than that number. So then back into NCD, this time using the true mean, which was 12. So the true mean was 12. My lower was uh, 12.1947378. My upper was just a really big positive number. Standard deviation stayed the same, and that gave me my beta, which was 0 0.269. If instead of being given the significance level here, we were given where we would accept or reject H0, then we just miss out that first step. We don't have to use the fact that the original mean was 12.6 and find where the accept region is. We can just use the information that would be given to us. So if, for instance, in this last question that you just tried, if we were automatically told that we would accept H0 if uh, the length of the worm of the 
sorry, the mean length of the 10 worms was more than 12.2, then we just wouldn't have to find that number to begin with. And we just straight away find the probability uh, with the mean being 12 that we ended up with a value of more than 12.2, given that the standard deviation was still 1 divided by the square root of 10. So next time, we are going to move on to having a look at how we find the probability of uh, making a type 2 error for the Poisson hypothesis testing.